we're gonna make a video today on rebuilding the front end on the 66 Caprice. It's the same as my 65 Impala. I've already done that before, so we have some experience on it. Uh, we're gonna replace pretty much all the parts under the front end, the wear parts. We're gonna replace uh, end links, and you can see the condition of the end links. They're really, really bad. We're gonna replace ball joints. Uh, upper and lower control arm bushings and center link and tie rod ends we also have some parts on the back end I may end up doing a separate video for that we have all the control arm bushings on the, that go on the back and the panard bar bushings I'm going to try to make a video that shows at least one side on the front you can see we got all brand new Moog parts they say those are the best ones you can buy so. We bought all new ones for this for front and back. And the ones that we couldn't get moved, we got a couple energy suspension. The center link is not moved. There's only like one person that makes that that I found. You can buy it on eBay, it's about the cheapest place to buy it. So we're gonna start taking apart one side. We're gonna take apart the driver's side first. We're gonna take out the end links, we're gonna take the strut rod. We're going to take the strut rod loose. We've got to take this, the uh, shocks out of the middle of the spring. Then we'll have to, when we get ready to, we'll have to take spring compressor and compress the spring and take the ball joints loose. But basically, we're just disassembling right now. But these bushings here are the strut rod bushings. They get cracked and everything too. As you can see, they're really in bad shape. Everything's cracked up and dry rod. They may have replaced the ball joints. Somebody put disc brakes on this car before. They may have replaced the ball joints at that time. Either way, they're getting new ones today. And tie rod ends are probably in bad shape it looks like. Everything looks to be worn out. We shot everything with PB Blaster before we started this. So hopefully it'll make things easier to come apart. Sometimes these can be really hard to take apart. <coughs> Right now he's taking the end link off from the uh, sway bar. And they usually come apart pretty easy, but you can see the bushings have been on there a long time. They're cracked all up. You can see the condition of them. And all that gets thrown away. The new ones come with everything. Yeah, they're bad. So we also, right now, the next thing we'll take off probably will be the shock. What I plan to do with this video is show one side of everything. That way the video is not too long. And it works the same on both sides. Does it have a nut on there? I can't tell. I'm going to try to spin it. And I don't think uh, it does. Look at the, I don't think it does. Look at the control arm is laying up there. Are the nuts welded on? Yeah. Okay, so we don't need a wrench on the top. All we need is the uh, whatever you use for the bottom. We're going to use impact. That makes more sense that they would have done that. But these shocks look like they're not too old on this car, so they're probably not hard to take loose. So you got the two out of the bottom, and now we just got to go to the top and take the, a deep well socket. Let me get my magnetic tool. You're going to have so many, you might as well just put them. You ain't going to be able to put them like that. Oh, you think? Yeah. You just have to keep them with whatever they go with. Alright, so up, up here, it takes a larger socket. Right there. 5 eighths, man? Maybe a 9 16 or 5 eighths. It's a 9 16 Yeah, 9 16 right? So once we take this loose, the shock will fall out the bottom.
And it's just being held on by the bushing on the top right now. Like I said, this don't look too old. Yeah, they actually look like they've been replaced. The bushings are good too. The next thing we're going to do is take the tie rod in off on the outside and you know it's got a cotter pin in it and a nut and they look they're covered in dirt and grease so they've been under there in there for a long time all the way so we're turning the wheel all the way so it can get better access to the tie rod in sometimes it can be hard to get these cotter pins to come out Stick your needle nose through that little loop and then you can take your hammer and tap it out. Well, that one came out easy. And since we don't have to worry about keeping these, sometimes you can just knock these with a hammer, but if you do this on ones you gotta keep, you'll mess up the threads. Sometimes they're very hard to get loose. But that one came out. The ball joints is the same way. Sometimes you can actually tap them on the side here with a hammer and it will make it fall out. I've had success with that sometimes and sometimes not. Alright, uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is get the spring compressors. And, uh, compress the spring so that we can take the ball joints loose and, you, and the way that works you have to uh, put the, you have to put the spring compressor up through the hole in the bottom where the shock came out and reach up in there and grab it as high as you can you can see him putting it up in there and this can be an aggravating part of the job, but it works. Hmm. You want to grab it as high as you can. I'm going to go higher now. Huh? Maybe. We're going up another one. One more? Yeah. Alright, so you see, see he hooked so the shock on one I mean, he, he, he hooked it on the spring on one side. Now he's just got to hook it on the other. It can be, so you just grab the top there and bend it out to grab it. All right, so see there, that's how it works. You grab it on both sides. You want to try to keep this thing as centered as possible. Don't always look as pretty as you would hope. You put the other side in here like this, the other part of the spring compressor in here like this, and then you take a wrench or a ratchet and tighten up on the bottom of it. I sometimes use an impact. What size is that? Uh, it looks like 11 16 at least or four, three quarters. Probably three quarters man. And when you compress these springs there's a lot of energy stored in them so handle them very careful. I'm always a little concerned with the way they look when you use them like that. But you want to put that one part as high as you can because you need as much you need to grab as many coils as you can you need to grab as many coils as you can so you want to put the hooks as high up as possible Because if you don't get enough, you'll not be able to compress it enough to remove it. Still good, I think. Still 
Can you help me that? No, oh, I'm fine. You need to get a ring. It was blinding me. It's starting to get loose in the socket. You can see it moving a little bit. Sometimes these spring compressors are hard to... It seems like it's hard to get enough. It seems like it's always barely enough to do what we need to do. See it's starting to spin the spring now. It tells you the spring's almost compressed enough to do what we need. This can be kind of a hard part of the job. I don't know how much more I'm gonna get. So he's about got that compressed as we're gonna be able to do. <laughs> I got that stuck in there. That's all right, we'll get it out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the ball joints loose and put a jack under here so we can lower it down. And when we get done, when we get ready to put it back, we'll put the spring up in there and make, you have to make sure it's aligned right. And we'll raise it back up the same way. So we're gonna take the lower, I mean the upper ball joint off first so we can lower the jack down. Like I said, this had to have been replaced at some point because they have disc brakes on this car already. I don't know what size that socket is. That's probably three quarters or something. I don't think I can get it in there anyway. Maybe a socket. Maybe a ratchet wrench will fit. Three quarter. Yeah. Alright, so it takes three quarters of an inch or three quarter inch wrench or socket for that upper ball joint. But if you got a car that this has never been taken apart on, sometimes these can be really tight and rusty. So my car it was that was the case. A lot of the bolts I had to cut out with the torch. Not not the ball joint, but on the rear suspension. Alright, so you got the nut off. Now I'm gonna try lowering the jack just a little bit. So what we're gonna have to do now is take the strut rod loose from the lower control arm in order to lower the arm down far enough. There's two bolts on it and uh but we got the top we got the top ball joint loose using the pickle fork. So now we're going to take the the uh, strut rod bolts loose. Let's take the back bolt off. You ready? Yep. It ain't loose all the way. Hurry, it's home. It's home. So let's be careful. There could be some. Yeah, tension. Alright, so now the spring comes right out. Take it out that way. Just handle it careful. Don't throw it down. It might not be a problem, but I don't want to find out. Yeah. Lay it down. Knock your teeth Lay it down. Alright, so now we're going to put our nuts and bolts together the way they came out for this. So we don't lose them. Mix them up. So far, this That's car don't fit that. What's uh, in the gun? This car, the bolts haven't been in bad shape so far, so that's a good thing. Where do I should go? Broke. We'll find one. I 
thought that went there, but I ain't, I ain't swearing it does. I don't mind where it is. Those are trashed. So we're trying not to take the brake line off and have to bleed the brakes. So we're going to set a jack under that caliper to keep the tension off the... Oh, is that jacking up? Yeah, it is. Alright, so now we just have to take loose this other ball joint, which it looks pretty crusty. But we know they had it off when they put the disc on. As of right now, I don't see a cotter pin. Well, it looks like a very loose ball joint. Let me see that pig. No, no. See how easy that thing's flopping? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it don't help when you're at that angle, but... That's 7 eighths. You may want to use an impact on this, I don't know. So yes, it's a 7 eighths on the, on the bottom, but it looks like it's very crusty. If you can get the impact in there. I think I can. Oh, they got that slid way down there. I Got this rubber thing on the handle. Now the harder part of this is to separate this. Yeah, we might as well have done that before we unhook it from the car. Ball joint, yeah. Probably wouldn't have hurt none. <laughs> Persistence. You want to get it bad enough, you'll figure it out. So now we got the upper and lower control arms ball joints off. Upper and lower control arms off now. So on the lower there's a big bolt. I don't know if you can see it. On the lower there's a big bolt and nut that's in this hole right here and it's kind of a awkward one to get to. And that's also how you adjust your alignment. So what size is that socket? It's going be a size bigger than... This socket's one and an eighth. One inch. Oh. A little wear on it. The top one ain't like that. That bottom one's horrible. No, I don't think I have any other. Here, hold, hold it. See if you can hold it, and I'll try to turn it. I can probably turn it. I just gotta get another rinse. Yeah, you don't have to, I guess. Cause I can't do anything. It ain't got enough stroke there. Ball joints are not supposed to move this easily. They're, not, they're supposed to be pretty hard to move. And that's extremely bad. This is the bolt that the man at the alignment shop didn't know about. And didn't know how to line my car up. This, you'll see when this comes out, it's got two offset washers. And it gives you the adjustment. <laughs> God, money. Well, these have to be tightened really tight or your car will come out of alignment. I had that to happen too from another guy. He aligned it and when I got home my wheel flew out. Not flew out, but flew out sideways. These are special bolts that you have to have this type of bolt. If you break it, if you mess this bolt up. Go into the junkyard. You can see the nut on the back side of this. You just basically got to turn it all the way loose. Luckily this one's been greased up pretty good so it comes off fairly easy. It was tight at first but these have to be tightened really tight. But this is a, a nut and bolt that has to be turned when you're aligning your car. And when I took my car to get it aligned, the, the alignment got it and realized the way this was made. You can see the washer there that sits in the groove. When you turn that bolt you're actually going to turn the wheel in and out. So we, when we, we have to knock this out now. We want to be oh very, boy. 
I'm going to be very careful not to damage the threads. I brought some brass punches. That ought to be interesting. Take that washer off. It slides off. It won't spin. It's 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 got a hole that's cut just to set that one particular way. It's like a half moon. Need a screwdriver or something. It ain't moving. So now we're gonna knock this out through the other side. And it, it under good conditions, it comes out pretty easy. Looks like his is coming out fairly. <laughs> Something you're gonna buy on the shelf. You're gonna have to hunt it down. I don't know if you can buy them new or not. I swear, I think daggone glass is fogging up. I can't see. When you get to this side, where's it at? When you get to this side, you got that offset washer on this side too, so you have to turn it with the with the wrench or the ratchet to get it to where to go through the hole. You can see I'll turn it to where it lines up with the hole that's over here. Now he'll be able to knock it out. Hold on, tap it easy. All right, so this is what the bolt looks like that holds it on. It has, a, like I said, the cutout on the side and the washer on that side goes uh, on that. So now that that's out, we'll just be able to grab the control arm and it should fall right out. I have to wiggle, wiggle it out. I got a pry bar laying right here behind you. Hold on, let me get some. So we just wiggled it kind of hard and, and it came out. We have uh, control arms that came off my 65 up here that I've already replaced the bushings on. And we're going to use those. Uh, but I put some uh, Global West lower control arms on my car. So I don't need to use these anymore, the ones that I had on there. So uh, one thing I am going to do though is I'm going to weld this right here because this bushing has a tendency to walk out of the hole and it can give you problems. I actually had that to happen. But we need to replace the ball joints on it because well, I damaged them when I took them out and he's already bought new ones. So we're replacing the ball joints on here because uh, they, were, they got damaged. When I was taking them back out of my car, the threads did. The threads are really, really easy to damage. But you can see these ball joints come off easier than what they would from the factory. On my 63 Impala, the uh, bushings that were in the lower control arm completely disintegrated. And you run over bumps and it would squawk like wah, wah. And that's what I found. Like all that rubber was gone. It was metal on metal. Yeah, and that's what comes with that. I don't know why they do it like that.
So now I just pull that out. That's pretty much how the lower ball joint goes in. So I was looking at it. The upper ball joints are the ones that are riveted in from the factory. I don't know if the ones that we have here are going to be riveted or if they've been replaced. We'll find out when we start working on it. But you just grind them out and replace them with bolts that come with them. Alright, so we got the, the new ball joint installed. He's pressing the cup down around the sides right now to make sure it's up on there good where it won't, all the grease won't shoot out of it from that angle. And it's on there good. So we're, we're not going to install this back right now. We're going to keep disassembling. Put the nut on there and everything. Cause we, we, we're going to go weld that back bushing in anyway. Just put a tack on there so that it will not slide out. Sometimes these old okay. control arms. Oh, that's supposed to go up there. Sometimes these old control arms have a... Uh, so we got that back with us? Yeah. They're a little bit sloppy where the bushing fits in there and it can it can cause the bushing to slide back and forth all right now we're going to take the upper control arm loose it has two bolts that holds on this uh dog bone piece they're right there they're right there and then you have to take the two bolts out of the end which makes it where you can uh it, they hold the bushings on and you got to be careful with these because that bar is cast so you can you can over tighten that and strip that out i've seen that done so that's what we're going to do next. So the only thing you have to take loose is these two bolts in the middle of the dog bones in order to get this off. Once you take that off, the whole upper control arm will come out. All right, so we took the upper control arm off. We removed those bolts and then it just slipped right out. And you get, we'll have to replace these bushings. You can see the condition of it completely worn out, almost gone in certain places. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll do that shortly, but we're going to continue and disassemble the rest of it so we can do all that at once. Probably ain't gonna get to the part it needs to get to. All right, try it again. You got it on removal, right? Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> About to do what I said not to do. Uh, Strip out the cast iron. <laughs> <laughs> take that brass part and we can knock this thing let's go back to vice I mean, I hold on a minute on these upper control arms to get this middle bar out the way i've done it and the way i've seen it done is take a torch and melt the rubber out of it then you can slide the bar out by hand then you can we can worry about getting the inner and outer casing of the bushing off do the rubber well yeah hit, heat up this this end all that rubber will melt out of there <laughs> Let it, let it burn. But, uh, Can we do this in tape? Take it. You don't have a big enough socket. Or you do. Because I think we heated it up and then we knocked it out while it's melting. That looks like it's all I got. Man. It doesn't tap over the whole thing. Put it right there like yeah, that? Yeah. 
It's probably not far enough yet. It's not melted enough yet, I mean. All right. Hold on. Let's melt it some more. Heat it on that side also, like right there. Get the bigger hand right here. As you can see, it pops right out when you do that. That old thing is the bush encasement, so it don't hurt to get it hot. Yeah, get it hotter. Get it hotter. It's going. Yeah. All right, so that's how you get that out. And you can try it other ways, and it is very hard to get out if you toxic paint. If you don't do it that way. There may be other ways that I don't know about, but that's the way I do it. These are the ones where you have to remove the rivets. There, I can see it. They're pretty big. See right there. All right, we got this, we got everything out of this one now. We're ready to put them back in. We got the, the bushings were, were in there, the, in, the outer race of the bushings, and it just came right out. 
It wasn't hard to remove. We just laid it down there and knocked it out. So both of these are ready. So now we're ready to put the new ball joint and the new bushings. All right, so the new upper ball joint comes into pieces like this. It slips in from the top. Just line up the bolt holes. And then you slip this piece on the bottom. And then we gotta put the bolts in from the top. Okay, throw it in. Where is it tight? Shouldn't. All right, so the new bolts are a little bit tight for the existing holes. So we may have to uh, drill the hole out just a hair. Yeah, that the thing to fit it on. And you can see the new one, the new one's a little tight. So we're gonna take a drill bit and move it. Now we're going to line up the three holes and put the three bolts in. With the lock washers. So we took a socket and a hammer and drove the new bushings in while the rod is in the middle. You gotta have the rod in there while you're doing it because it's trapped by the two bushings. Then you put the two end caps on there and tighten them up. And then we'll be ready to put this thing back in. The upper control arm will be complete. The, you can see we screwed the new uh, ball joint in, tightened it up. So it's all ready. You need to protect the threads on that so you don't mess them up. Yeah, that's it. So we're taking the tie rod in off on this side so we can remove the center link. The center link is connected on with, by both tie rod ends and it's also connected to the idler arm. And we bought a new idler arm also. <clears throat> but it connects to the idler arm and the, uh, the steering box on the other side. So right now we're going to take off this tie rod in. We've already got the other one off. We'll rebuild the center link. Hammer. Uh, just like the tie rod ends with the nut and uh, cotter pin. Hmm. So 
Sorry, I know I'm all in your way, but I can't see. Get it out? No. Can you hook the pliers in it and hammer it out? No. Not yet. Can't even get I can't even begin to see the hole till it's like pushed out so I know you just tell each other that all every day. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we got the center link took out. So what we gotta do now is disassemble and put the new tie rod ends on. I didn't buy any new adjusters. So we're going to have to use the old adjusters. We're going to put it all together and put it back on. You have to measure anything so you know about yeah. where it's at now? Yeah, we're going to try to make them look the same. When we take, when we take the tie rod ends out, we're going to try to make them the same length same amount of threads showing so it won't be maybe it won't be as bad out of adjustment So now what we're going to do is thread out the thread out the, the outer tie rod end. We're gonna we're gonna try to count or or get a little small. Take one zero. You got a scale, a wire brush. I got a wire brush, maybe. I got no scale. We should just bought adjusters. I didn't think about it. Well, I, well, my guy just sent me up my order, so. Mm -hmm. So we just took a measuring tape and measured the original tie rod ends and how far they were sticking out the threaded part on both ends. And we put it all back together. Now we're gonna torque everything. The tie rod ends are supposed to be torqued and all the parts have a torque value on this. So we're going to change out the strut rod bushings. You got a new rubber for this side of the sun? Yeah. All right, so we got the new strut rod here. The strut rod bushings comes with new washer, new rubber piece. Well, these are all Moog. And this is like a, supposedly an improved design. Uh, so you put, you, it has a picture on the instructions that tells you exactly how to put it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Put it in like that. They have to show it down here. And then he puts the rubber bushing on like this. You can see this well. Yeah. And then he puts a washer on with cup size and a belt and a brand new nut. Still has it rough. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put the spring back in. We never, we left it compressed. There's a pocket that the end of the spring sits in on the lower control arm. Hold on. All right, gonna keep going. Hold on. Yeah, 
controller. All right, so we got two bolts holding on the strut rod to the lower control arm. I'm going ahead and tighten them up, lift that out of the way. So the arm won't try to go side to side. Right now we're gonna jack up the lower control arm and try to get the spring into place. Ready? Yeah, like I said, it's important for the spring to be seated in its socket on the back. Stand if you can't see what he's doing. I can, I can see what he's doing. We're gonna raise the go ahead. We're gonna make sure the spring is sitting up in the pocket in the top right. So we're we've got the spring in the pocket and it's it's sitting in the right spot on the top and bottom. So now we're torquing the ball joint, the upper ball joint to 50 foot pounds. Now now that we got it to there already. Turn it enough to get the carter pan in. Well, I can get it in. No, you can't. It looks like it on this side, maybe. Oh, maybe I'm looking at something that I, maybe I'm not seeing. Oh, yeah. Well, we lucked out on that one, anyway. So that's gonna be one of the bigger ones that's over there on that table, I think. Let's do it right here? Or well, right over there. You're, you can turn it just a little tiny bit more. A little more, I think. Can you bend those or? Yeah, we can bend them. Need them with pliers right there. So the bottom one, I believe, goes to 80 foot pounds. So the bottom torques to 90 foot pounds. Well, we're going to take the idler arm off right now we bought a new one and you got to reach down in here this car's got air conditioning so it's hard to get down there to it but it, the socket goes straight down in there there's one bolt on there that holds it on one nut it has a large lock washer so we've got a brand new one here that we're gonna put on. And I don't know if the idler arm was worn out. I replaced it on my car when I redid the front end and we decided to do it on his car too. Go ahead and replace everything. There's the big. So if we compare them side by side, they look exactly the same. The new one has the new one. Does it have a grease fit? Uh, no. Yep. Okay, it comes with the new grease fitting for the bottom of it. The old one, I can't really tell that it's worn out, but we wanted to replace anything that could have any bearing on the steering being loose and sloppy. 
So we went ahead and bought one. Alright, so I'm going to put the inlink bushings on now. It, the way these are set up, you have to put the bolt with a washer and a rubber, and then another rubber piece and another uh, another washer and then a spacer, then another washer, then another rubber piece. Then it goes, you already put it, oh, okay. Then you put it through the sway bar. Then you put another rubber piece on top and another washer and the nut. It's pretty easy to do when you get when you do both sides at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting the sway bar, which is the way I normally do it for some reason. And that, then you just tighten it up, and that's pretty much it for that. And we've already put all the steering pieces back together. The tie rod ends are connected back. We greased everything. The center link's installed. So we're pretty much done. All right, that's good.